Okay, part two for me. Uh, Rover oil change. As you can hear, I'm underneath the uh, big carport I've got, and it's just started lashing with rain. So hopefully it's not going to do too much to the sound, but either or you're having a video anyway. So two litre Honda. Is it an F series? Something like that. Um, pretty easy to do. I say filters at the back. It's like literally down the back over there. Relatively easy to get at. Oil filler caps just here. We'll have that off. Move that over there. And it's just a simple case of, well, spill and fill oil change really. There's nothing, uh, you know, I'm not a rocket surgeon. It don't take a rocket surgeon to sort it out. So that's the oil that you need. 1040, semi synthetic. Um, brand, whatever you use is up to you. This is just some cheap stuff because uh, it's been a while since this has had an oil change, so it's not going to be in it long. Stick some comma or some duckums in it, something like that. Um, Hang on a minute. Be right back. Tell you what, let's. Um, I'll tell you a story. These things on here, like an aluminium sheet, long time ago, I had a customer come to me, it's just some aluminium foil, why are you putting aluminium foil over the top of that is beyond me when the, the cap's got a seal on it, but by the by, I had a customer years ago, uh, I can't remember what it was, it was a V6 car of some description and um, I think, what was it? I don't know, don't matter, and one side of the engine, V6, it was absolutely rattling its gonads off and the other side of the engine, the top end of the engine, like camshaft, valve train, was absolutely silent and the other side was rattling its head off and she's going to have a look at it for me, I was like, okay, fair enough and she didn't want to spend big money on it because it was the car was knocking on at the time. What it, the car was was a Mazda 323 uh, V6, really rare thing. And uh, she hadn't had it long when, it, when she bought the car. And I said, "Yeah, I'll have a look at it." And um, expecting to do major o engine overhaul on it. And by the looks of it, she had the car about six weeks, and they must have serviced it and done whatever for her before she picked it up. And she said, oh, it's making a right racket. Can you have a look at it? So, okay. So I took the valve covers off. And uh, just to try and see what was going on. So I took, the, I think it was the back one that I took off first. And it was nice and wet in there. Plenty of oil spraying about the place. And in the front bank of three cylinders, it was, it was drier than a popcorn fart. And, okay, what's happening here? So I fired it up. Made a right mess underneath the engine bay. Obviously, the rear bank of cylinders are getting ample oil. Front, literally just enough to uh, lubricate the cam followers, and that's about your lot. The rest of it was absolutely bone dry. So, okay, I wonder what's going on here. So, I drained the engine oil out of it. Nothing untoward, no sparklies in there, nothing to, uh, uh, nothing untoward. So, I had a look at taking all the um, uh, cam followers and stuff out of it to make sure there was no damage. It was a hydraulic tappet engine. And what I found was a piece of this. And how it had got, and it must have fallen into the engine when they you know, filled it up with oil. And what it had done is it had dropped inside the engine and it had wrapped itself around one of the camshaft lobes and blocked off the main oil feed uh, to the camshaft and cam followers. And that's why I don't particularly like these. So always make a point to when you do, if you have to top your oil up, remove it completely. Don't pierce a hole in it and, you know, just flap it back out of the way. Take it off completely so you, you don't risk anything falling in there. And luckily, um, for um, Laura with her engine, there was no real detrimental damage to it. I put some flushing oil through it and did a couple of oil changes on it and she ran the car for another four or five years after that and then 
then we scrapped it but uh, yeah important important tip so I'll we'll have a quick look at the oil I can't remember how much I put on it so I've been waffling I think this holds 4.6 litres I think if memory serves me correctly yeah so put the oil filler cap on uh, start it up fill the oil filter up and I'll give it a rough check but bearing in mind I'm still on the ramps and it's going to be here for another couple of hours so I'll top it up when it's down So yeah, just in case anybody's wondering, my camera's not back to front. The engine does sit around the other way in these cars. Uh, so gearbox is on the right hand side of the vehicle, engine on the left, uh, just the Honda way, I guess. And um, why well, they've done it like that, I couldn't tell you, don't know. Um, yeah, relatively easy engine to work on. Cam belts here. Uh, this does run two, well, it runs a single cam belt and it runs an extra belt that sits behind the um, camshaft drive belt because the engine actually runs it's a relatively smooth engine it does actually run a balancer shaft and um, or I think it runs two balancer shafts if memory serves me correctly and um, you obviously change the balancer shaft belt when you're changing the, uh, the cam belt and water pump I have done it on this engine along with some um, uh, new auxiliary drive belts uh, I've got to put some new plugs in it and I think that'll be a lot because as I say I've completely rebuilt the brake master cylinder uh, fitted a brand new brake caliper on the back uh, put brake pads in the front uh, I've bled the clutch so it is a manual car not an auto and just done some cleaning general cleaning and tidying under it to get some detail to it because uh, you know you don't see many of these about now particularly in the UK and um, this one it's actually a very nice tidy car as you've seen in the video I shot a couple of months ago um, the reason why it's been off the road for such a long time is because we waited for the lockbook so yeah it finally turned up today I'm a very happy man <sighs> yeah I'll do it's pretty dirty so We'll do a few thousand miles on that and um, we'll change it again. So, put a bit more oil in and I'll top it off correctly when she's off the ramp. So your minimum marks there, your full marks there, and just as a little tip, most motor manufacturers, the difference in oil or the quantity of oil between the full and the max mark is usually one litre. So if your oil does fall down onto the minimum mark, it ain't no great shakes, just put another litre in it and it'll be fine. So we'll button that up like so. So yeah. Thanks everybody for watching, um, big welcome to all my new subscribers and uh, thanks everybody for the nice comments and uh, egging me along to do all this kind of stuff, it's fantastic. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for, um, I will do a reveal on the uh, French toilet that's about six feet away from us, probably tomorrow or then over the next couple of days. Uh, I have got a very, very close friend of mine coming down tomorrow. 
uh, for a service and a brake job on his Rover 800. So I shall be filming that for your viewing pleasure. And um, yeah, thanks very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff. And I'll see you soon. Take care, peeps. Bye.